Radiation, although a scary word, is all around us in more ways than you know. From low energy radio waves to super high energy gamma rays, each having their own properties and being useful for different applications. Radiation itself is simply particles or waves of energy that have the ability to pass through matter, which are just things or a vacuum, which is space without things. In order for us to really understand the unique properties that X-rays possess, which is what's made medical imaging a possibility, it's worth exploring the other types of radiation first. In total, there are five main types, alpha particles, beta particles, neutrons, X-rays and gamma rays. The first three are known as particle radiation and the other two are known as electromagnetic radiation. And so in this video, I'm gonna take you through all of these types of radiation, which will help us with the foundational understanding required to fully appreciate medical imaging. We'll start off by going through particulate radiation, which as the name suggests, is comprised of particles that have mass. Then we'll flip the script and talk about the electromagnetic radiation, which are traditionally thought of as waves, then delve more specifically into X-rays and gamma rays. And I'll finish talking about ionizing radiation, which is really what we're all here for, what it all means for you, and why it's important to understand. Okay, so let's first talk about particulate radiation, or just particle radiation, which are made up of subatomic particles such as protons, neutrons, and electrons that are emitted by the nucleus of an atom during radioactive decay. But what does that even mean? Well, if you break it down, they refer to particles, little tiny balls of things that are made up from the building blocks of atoms, therefore protons, neutrons, and electrons, which are positive, neutral, and negative, respectively. They're produced and discharged from within the heart of the atom, its nucleus, during a process called radioactive decay, where an atom spontaneously gives off some energy in the form of a particle. And so the three main types of particulate radiation we'll cover are alpha particles, beta particles, and the trusted neutron. First, let's talk about alpha particles. Alpha particles are made up of protons and neutrons, which essentially makes them identical to a helium atom. And they're emitted by the nucleus of heavy elements such as uranium and plutonium. They have a positive charge and are relatively large, meaning they don't penetrate very far into matter and can simply be stopped by a sheet of paper. This means they have a very high linear energy transfer, which refers to the amount of energy that a particle transfers to a material. And so because of this, Alpha particles have no clinical relevance to medical imaging. It is important to note that they can be dangerous if they are inhaled or ingested, as it can cause damage to living cells. Now let's talk about beta particles. Beta particles are electrons or positrons that originate from the nucleus of unstable atoms and they have a high speed and energy. They have a negative charge and are much smaller than alpha particles, meaning they can penetrate a little further into matter. But although beta particles have a very low linear energy transfer, they can still be stopped by a thin sheet of metal, like a few millimeters of aluminium. They can also cause damage to living cells if they come into contact with them, but they're not as dangerous as alpha particles. And finally, let's talk about the neutron. Neutrons are neutral neutral particles with a mass similar to a proton, but with no charge. And they're emitted either during nuclear fission, which is the splitting of an atomic nucleus, or nuclear fusion, which refers to two very high energy nuclei colliding and therefore fusing together to form a new heavier element. Neutrons have a much higher penetrating power than alpha and beta particles, and they can cause damage to living tissue if they come into contact with it. Now, because their mass is similar to a proton, they also have high LAT properties. But depending Depending on their energy, they can be highly penetrating, sometimes even more than X-rays and gamma rays. All right, now let's move on to the electromagnetic spectrum, which is basically just the range of all the different types of electromagnetic radiation, from the longest wavelength and lowest energy radio waves to the shortest wavelength and highest energy gamma rays. Each type of electromagnetic radiation has a unique set of properties, and they're used in different ways for a variety of purposes. The key distinction between this and particulate radiation is that electromagnetic waves don't exist as a a particle with mass or charge. Instead, they're considered to be little packets of pure energy. What's interesting is that irrespective of their wavelength or frequency, which are inversely related by the way, they have a few properties in which they share. For example, they can travel through a vacuum that is empty space with absolutely nothing in it. They're transmitted or moved from one place to another by electric and magnetic fields that are oscillating or swinging at right angles from each other, hence the electromagnetic name. And when they're traveling in a vacuum, they go at the speed of light, which is approximately 300,000 kilometers per second. And to put that into perspective, that's like doing laps around our planet seven and a half times with each second that passes. It just doesn't make sense to the human mind how mind-blowingly fast that is. But anyway, as I've alluded to already, they're described and categorized by their wavelength, which is the distance between successive crests of a wave. 
and their frequency, that is how many waves are passing on a fixed point for a given amount of time, or let's say just a second. And lastly, they exhibit wave and particle-like behavior. Now this does not mean particles in the traditional sense of the word, which has mass and charge, it just means packets of energy, which are traditionally referred to as photons. Okay, now let's delve a little deeper into the higher energy and more exciting parts of the spectrum, which are of course referring to X-rays and gamma rays. The electromagnetic spectrum is organized by wavelength, where both X-rays and gamma rays are positioned towards the far right, meaning they have the shortest wavelength and therefore the highest energy and frequency. They are, however, different enough in energy that only X-rays are suitable for radiographic imaging. But what exactly are X-rays? Well, we know that they're a type of electromagnetic radiation or wave similar to visible light, which we're all familiar with, but with much higher energy. That is a shorter wavelength and a higher frequency compared to visible light. They're produced when high energy electrons collide with a metal target. These targets are usually made up of materials such as tungsten or molybdenum, as they have a high atomic number and they have an ability to effectively convert energy from the electron into X-ray photons. X-rays have no mass or charge, but they do have the ability to penetrate our skin, muscle, and soft tissue, but are absorbed by the denser materials in our bodies, such as our bones. Diagnostic radiography, which is largely facilitated by X-rays, is widely used in the medical field. It has made it possible for us to create detailed images of the internal structures of your body, and for your doctor to diagnose what condition you have without having to cut you open. That alone should make you appreciate that medicine is blind without imaging. Now there are two types of x-rays, characteristic and bremsstrahlung radiation. This is beyond the scope of this video, but I'll have another dedicated video exploring these two types. Link to that below the like button. All right, now what about gamma rays? Apart from having a higher energy compared to x-rays, they have a higher penetrating power that allows them to pass through most materials, including concrete and lead. And so they're quite dangerous if not properly controlled. And unlike X-rays, which are produced by the interaction of high energy electrons with matter, gamma rays are produced by the decay of atomic nuclei or by high energy cosmic processes such as nuclear fission, where a heavy nucleus splits. One X-ray property that I haven't mentioned yet is their ionizing nature. And this refers to X-rays having enough energy that they can actually remove tightly bound electrons from atoms resulting in the formation of what's known as an ion, which is an atom that has either lost or gained one or more electrons. This concept serves as the foundation of ionizing radiation. So ionizing radiation is any radiation that has sufficient energy to cause an ionization event. That is to knock off tightly bound electrons from atoms. And these include X-rays, gamma rays, alpha particles, beta particles and neutrons. Prolonged exposure to high levels of ionizing radiation is dangerous and can increase the risk of cancer and other health related problems. And so it's essential that when we're working with this type of radiation with patients, as we would be when working with x-rays and CT scans, that we maximize the safety measurements and minimize the exposure to as low as reasonably achievable. If you haven't seen my video on exposure factors, I'll also link that below, check it out. Let's delve a little deeper into what's happening on an atomic level. Once an ionization event takes place, that is after an X-ray interacts and removes an electron, this results in an ion pair, where we have the electron that's been emitted and this has a negative charge because electrons are negative, and the remaining atom which now has a positive charge since the negatively charged electron has been stripped away from it. This whole process of ionizing radiation can be direct or indirect. Direct ionization occurs when the X-ray enters the atom and directly interacts with the electron and removes it from the atom, whereas indirect ionization occurs when the x-ray removes an electron and then that electron goes on to be a beta particle and is responsible for removing yet another electron. X-rays, gamma rays and neutrons are considered to be both direct and indirect, whereas alpha and beta particles are mainly considered to be directly ionizing. If however the electron is not removed from the atom and instead receives just the right amount of energy from the x-ray to transfer it up to the outer shell, this is known as excitation. I know, very exciting. <gasps> When this happens, the electron remains in this high orbit for a short period of time, and as it comes back down to its original shell, it releases some energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation, such as light, 
which is the basis of luminescence. Now, not all electromagnetic radiation is ionizing, but pretty much from ultraviolet or UV rays and below, they're all considered to be non-ionizing radiation, meaning they don't have enough energy to cause an ionization event. Whereas X-rays and gamma rays are ionizing, with the addition of particulate radiation mentioned earlier, which included alpha particles, beta particles, and neutrons. So for all intents and purposes, anytime we're exposing someone to X-rays or any kind of ionizing radiation, it poses a potential risk to that individual. And it's up to us, the patient and the referring doctor to evaluate the benefit to risk analysis of that procedure. I actually wrote a paper on this, particularly on screening mammography and the radiation dose involved. I'll link that below if you're interested. All right, that's it for this video. If anything didn't make sense, please go back and rewatch that specific section. I've put timestamps for convenience. If you haven't seen my previous video, it's on a method I developed to easily mask your exposure factors. I think you'll find it pretty helpful when working clinically. So click here to watch that and stay curious.